Hi, everybody. I'm LaVon Lawson, and today we're going to be interviewing Francis Yu for BHBA Interviews. So, Francis, welcome to BHBA Interviews. Thanks for having me. Francis, tell us about your practice. I'm a business attorney, um, but through the years, I've actually created a, a, a subspecialty, as it were, where I've become the go-to lawyer for Korean-American business owners, Korean-American businesses, inbound corporations from Korea, outbound to Korea. So essentially, anything having to do with business-related matters for Korean businesses seem to wind up on my desktop. What initially drew you to get involved with the BHBA? You know, I was a young associate at, at what is now the largest law firm in Los Angeles at the time. I was practically running my own group and I was looking for an organization where it was collegial. I could have friends and support, be able to bounce ideas off one another. And after looking around, I realized that the Beverly Hills Bar Association was the right fit for me. I can make an immediate contribution and get immediate feedback, and the people were just amazing. What excites you about being an attorney? What excites me about being an attorney is the problem-solving aspect of my job. You know, ultimately, lawsuits or transactions are fueled and driven by personalities, and these personalities have needs. And what is that need? What is the objective? You know, it's, it's juggling many balls in the air, but once you understand what the parties expect and hope for, then using that personality, we can reach a resolution. So it's finding that solution by getting to the crux of what is important here. What's driving this? And that's the part that I enjoy, the problem solving. What is the best advice that you've ever received and from whom? The best advice I've ever received was actually from my father. Um, it was the evening of my swearing in ceremony when I'd been sworn into the state bar. It was just the two of us, um, we're at a restaurant bar and we had obviously had way too much to consume at this point in time. My father was a lawyer in South Korea before, obviously, he immigrated. And he put his arms around me and he looked at me and said, always remember this. No one goes to see a lawyer when they're happy. They go to see a lawyer because they have a need or a problem. And your job is to fix that need or that problem. It's not to make it any worse. What do you most value in a colleague? From an employee, what I value is pride that they take in their work and the responsibility for their work. Uh, from a friend, the characteristics I value the most is loyalty, trust, and patience. Do you form friendships easily? Social colleagues, yes. You know, uh, externally, I'm a, uh, an outgoing individual, you know, fairly engaged. But on a more deeper personal level, deep lifelong friendships, well, that's why they call it a lifetime. You know, it takes time. And so not so much. I get that. A little more about the Beverly Hills Bar Association. What benefits have you received from being involved with the BHBA? The Beverly Hills Bar is my professional home. It's, it's where I, I've cultivated and fostered and established those lifelong friendships that I've mentioned a little while ago. Mm -hmm. This is where I get the majority of my CLE credits through the outstanding programs that the bar consistently holds. Um, I've been fortunate to be invited to speak at some of those uh, CLE events as well. I've taught courses on legal, legal secretary school for the last 12 years or so. And look, from the staff to our executive director to the, the collegiality of its members, everything, it's, it's constantly giving back to me, which is why I've maintained such a close relationship with the bar and I've served on leadership positions as well. Tell me about your idea of success. My idea of success is to be spiritually, emotionally, and financially free from the everyday stressors of my life so that I can pursue my own passions. Have you always felt that way? No, no. Um, 
I fell into the trap that so many of us do of, of materialism, consumption, um, ego-driven objectives. Um, thankfully, that stopped. I don't know when it stopped, but it stopped. You know, like, I don't care how many zeros are after my paycheck or my compensation package anymore. Um, what car I drive, where I go out to eat dinner, uh, none of that seems to matter really about who you are and who you really strive to become. And that's why uh, my ideas have changed. Then who are you striving to become? I have no idea. I have no idea. I know that I can just be a better person, you know, and, and that's what I'm pursuing. But I don't have an end, end objective in mind. I don't have that picture. Who is the most interesting person that you've met in the last year and what made them interesting? The most interesting person that I met within the, the past year was a girlfriend of mine from college, my first love, my first true love. And we had not seen or spoken or communicated with one another whatsoever in 25 years, and, and there she was. And she is the most interesting person because she became everything that I thought she was capable of becoming and then exceeded those expectations. I mean, she just became just the most outstanding human being um, possible. And it was just very, very gratifying to know that, that she accomplished what I thought she was capable of accomplishing. It sucked that she didn't do it with me, <laughs> but it was very gratifying nonetheless. What movie could you watch again and again, and why? Easy, it's Casablanca. And I love Casablanca because it's exotic, romantic, and ultimately idealistic. Exotic, romantic, and idealistic. Tell me more. Well, it's exotic because it's in Morocco during World War II. It's romantic because here's this surly, cynical character in Humphrey Bogart who falls in love and it's idealistic because he gives up that love for the greater cause. How can you go wrong with that? What words would people most likely use to describe you? I hear aggressive. Sometimes I hear overly aggressive. Okay, what does that mean? I'm a litigator and a lawyer. The way you prepare a case or the way you prepare a transaction is to know every single detail. It's preparedness that wins the case. And so I, I do it with, with zealousy and, and I leave nothing unturned, nothing overlooked. And oftentimes I tell my, my associates at work, our clients did not hire us to become prom king or queen. They hired us to do our job and our job as my father said, was to solve our clients' problems, to fill their need. And so we do it. And sometimes colleagues or opposing counsel take that to be overly aggressive. I think I'm just doing my job. What word would you like people to use to describe you? Thoughtful. Thoughtful? How so? I'm doing my job. But as a human being, as the person that I am, I'd like to be thought of as being thoughtful, considerate. Do you think you are? I hope I am. Let's turn to passion projects. Do you have one? And if so, what is it? I have several passion projects. But if I had to choose one, that would be the mental health advocacy services. Okay, what, tell me about the mental health advocacy services. MHAS was founded 40 years ago as a joint venture between the Beverly Hills Bar Association and the LA County Bar Association. It's the only nonprofit agency that legally advocates for our citizens who suffer from mental illness, um, whether through discrimination or failure to receive disability care, and the list goes on. And so I became involved initially as a board member through the Beverly Hills Bar Association and then have 
been a board member there for 12 plus years. I'm the current president. I was formerly the president. And I think with the passage of everyday news where mental illness and mental health plays a factor, the need becomes greater and greater for us to, to educate the public and protect our citizenry um, through this organization. So that, that would be my passion project. Tell me about hobbies. I love cooking. And, you know, when you're at work and you're a litigator or a lawyer, it's, it's, everything's time sensitive. You have time constraints and, and so much to accomplish within that very limited time period. And it's incredibly analytical, incredibly cerebral. So when I come home, I make myself a, a martini and I cook because cooking is all about sequential timing. But unlike the law, through cooking, I can be creative. Tell us something about yourself that would surprise and delight the audience. I think most of my friends and colleagues would be surprised to learn that I'm a first generation immigrant, that uh, I was born in South Korea, came here, had to learn the language, learn the customs, the mores, that I helped raise my two younger sisters, and that I worked every single odd job that you can imagine. I don't think people expect that of me. Um, I also believe that we live in the greatest country in the world. And that's a, that's a thought and a belief that I instilled in, in my child, my only son, which is why he's now at the Naval Academy in Annapolis. Because when I asked him, the Naval Academy, what made you decide on, on, on Actually, he wants to be a Marine. How did this happen? And he looked at me and said, you always said we live in the greatest country, so I'm paying back for us. What living person do you most admire and why? That one's easy. It's my mother. And it's my mother because she is the personification of the words grit and elegance which are not two words that are really easy to reconcile, but she is it. She's grit and elegance. Tell me more. My mother was a concert pianist and an opera singer in Korea. My father was a lawyer. They had a very, very comfortable life. And when they were in their mid thirties, because they wanted the three of us, myself and my two younger sisters, to have more opportunities, they gave up that life and came to this country not knowing how to speak English, not knowing what the customs were, not knowing anything. And so my father, who was a lawyer, becomes a janitor. And my mother, who was a pianist and an opera singer, becomes a seamstress, right? And through it all, they raised the three of us with, with love and security, um, She's my hero. So Francis, if you were in my position, what question would you ask? Tell me what motivates you. All right. Tell me what motivates you. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> mm -hmm. I believe that we live in a world that's basically good. And I'd like to be remembered as being good. So it sort of goes back to the beginning when I said my definition of success is to be able to pursue my passions. Who am I? What do I want? Am I doing something that I enjoy? Free from the stressors of the financial, the emotional or, or spiritual stressors that we blindly and, and, and willingly place upon ourselves. To be free from that, to just try to be the best that I can be. You know, that's what motivates me. 